So, today we're making a uh, down undercut. Full length, uh, 0 degree, 5 degree maybe. I uh, bought 1.1 ripstop from DIY Gear Supply. I'm in the process of measuring out all my darts and my baffles. Let's see if we can see anything in here. Here's my darts. Uh, measurements are pretty standard. I'm 5'6", so I got a short one. It's only 70 centimeters long. Um, I'm doing everything in a combination of inches and centimeters. Here in American, that's living in Sweden. The centimeters are easier to work with, but inches is what everybody's been doing on the net. So. Those are the measurements I'm starting with and the adding stuff in, but we got a long day of measuring and measuring and measuring and writing and writing and writing. I don't think I'm going to be sewing until after lunch today. Way after lunch. But uh, we got a, a quarter of the baffles done, and uh, we'll keep going. I'll let you see what it looks like when I start sewing the darts together. Okay, uh, we're ready to start sewing. Got the whole top shell marked out on my darts. Are done. All the measurements are done. All the baffles are drawn on. And here's the first bit I'm gonna pin. Let's see if I can. And we're gonna sew it up. All these darts all the way down on that side and that side. And then uh, we're ready to cut out my baffle walls of no seam. See how it goes. So, we're sewing darts. All pinned up. Where are my lines? There's my beautiful uh, sewing machine. Singer, hey, oh yeah, this Kvarna. 2000 from the 60s. It's beautiful. Works like a charm. Oh, so here we go, we're sewing. Can't film myself on sewing as much, but this is what it looks like when you set it up. And this tension a little bit high. Turn it down on the way up halfway through. So see how it goes when I keep going. So far so good. But well, we got about eighteen dots to sew on this piece and then it's on to the nauseum. So we're halfway done with this side. See what it looks like. This is the side that's gonna be up against the hammock. It looks pretty neat to me. Take a look at the darts. They came out. Let's see. Gets real small down here at the end. Let's see if we can pull that up. But it's we're gonna do what it's supposed to do. Make this side is a little rounder under your back. Okay, darts are done on one side. Little click. Pretty neat. Get a shot from here. All in a row. Worked out really well. Real happy with how accurate the machine's sewing. Uh, I just got the other side to do, and then it's time for the baffles. The baffle walls. Now I fold it in half. It'll you see both short sides. This is what it looks like. This is the side on towards the hammock, and this is the all of my uh, darts sewn in. So we got one side done. Now I'm gonna take out my no seam and with a tip I found on the internet, I'll make them nice and even. See if I can show you. Maybe Astrid might be able to film, show, do some filming for me, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, step stage one complete. Okay, we're cutting our walls, we're making them all parallel and exactly the right size. We got one and it worked, so I'm going to show off the method. We rolled it up so that the first we cut it so that they were all the right length, and then we rolled the lengthwise, we rolled it all the way up, and then we put it on the table. And now we're using a metal bar in the end of the table, measuring five inches to have a three inch wall and a one inch. Uh, Hem, Show them. Show them the other. That to, yep. and that's what one looks like, like that, and it's all even. And now we're gonna cut a couple more here, and then eventually we're gonna get them all. Seven more. Seven more. We need eight of them. But it's a way that I saw on the internet of how to get. I think his name was Biopthera. 
that showed me how to cut them all parallel like that without having to cut them the, with the whole piece out here and cut in straight lines. Now I just gotta cut a uh, six inch line. Ain't that hard. There we go. There she is. We roll out our little, in We're Swedish we got a rulltorta, a rolled up cake that we made. Just like that. Yeah. Roll up your cake like that and you cut pieces off it and you stick it on your plate. That's about what we did here. And so now all eight of those are done. Now I'm gonna hem it up. That's gonna be a whole lot of fun. We'll see if I, my measurements are good. But I'm gonna fold my edges first and then sew the long sides and the short sides and then make sure that I still got three inches in the middle. We're on our third baffle. I had to do a couple to make sure I was doing it right before I would show you guys how I was doing it. I'm measuring and writing with a little piece of a white pencil. Three inches in the middle and spacing out evenly and then I'm going to do the folds. Let me show you when it's done. Now that they figure out how to do it. So, here we go. I've got a tip for you guys. Um, one thing I noticed was that, oh this one's not the one that I did. Okay, let me see. Yeah. So we're right in the middle of the doing the walls of the noceum. Here I'm drawing with my ruler here, three inches in the middle. So that's where I'm gonna fold my hems up to, so I know if I can keep this three inches the whole way. Here's one that I just finished. And I got a great tip for you guys. I don't know if you can see it. But one side's got a smaller stitch size, stitch length. The, I was in, in my head I said a long stitch length would be good because then if I mess anything up it'll be quick to rip them out again. But the problem was that when I had a long stitch length it would start to pull the material and it would get all bubbly. So of course I go and ask the pro, I asked my wife, and she said try a short stitch length because when you got a long stitch length it starts to pull on the thread and you'll get that effect when it's such loose material. So like tips this. for you guys, two millimeter, yeah this if you look at this one, this is the first one I did. It's real bubbly. Hope it ain't gonna affect nothing. I might do another one. I got enough material. And it doesn't take that long. Um, but two millimeters was the stitch length I was using. And it works a whole lot better. Looks real nice now. I only got six more of these bad boys to do. And then we're bad boys. And then we'll be throwing then we'll be stitching them onto the part that I just fi that I finished this afternoon. Here we are day two. Uh still working on these baffle walls. Um got it down to a science, but it takes thirty minutes each one. Um I could have tried to skip the the hem on the four edges, but I'm uh, a little nervous about stress ripping the seams out and then be shit out of luck, so it's better to put all these, all this together. Um, I'm just going to show you how I try to do it. No method that seems to be working alright for me. I don't know if you could see on this, but I'm using a white uh, colored pencil, marking three inches across, trying to they're not as straight as I thought they would be. These, the ones I'm doing now are probably the first ones I did when I cut the first way. I did a better method the second time. Straight at edges, but keeping three inches, keeping the lines three inches and then folding up the hems here, up to that mark, and then pinning them. And I think I'm gonna have to write three inch parallel lines on it so I'm real sure the exact right size, but I mean, it's only gonna give a Eighth or a sixteenth of an inch on each side, maybe get a little wiggle in the sides of the walls, but it might shouldn't make much of a difference. And I'll probably be able to straighten it out when I'm looking at the lines on my shell. But we'll see what happens. Um, so far so good. But yeah, it just takes a lot of time. But I think we're gonna be able to sew these onto the top layer tonight. Here we go. We're sewing the walls on. And got it pinned on there. So that up there, of course, uh, missing about a centimeter. They got to be about a centimeter too short. Should have made it longer, but that's right. Quilt.
difficult to be in a centimeter shorter. No big deal. Won't make much of a difference, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna see how it looks when I'm done. When I get it done. So I discovered something interesting when I was doing these. That uh, sewing up the back of walls tightened them up, so they were it seemed a little short. And the first, the last two I did worked out really well. But this one was a little bit funny. I think my needle was getting bad. I was using shitty thread, and this one got quite a bit tighter than the other ones. So I just broke the thread and pulled it out, straightened it out as much as I could, and it was perfect, complete, quite the length. So one thing to check if you're feeling that your walls are getting short, just pluck a bit of thread and pull it. And most of the thread will stay in. Enough of the thread will stay in that it'll keep it shape. You don't need this thread anyway. I've seen guys that have pulled it out after they got it in there and saved 20 grams, 15 grams. It ain't worth it for me. I'm keeping it in there. But, um, yeah. And now it's plenty long enough, so that's what I'm going to continue to do on those ones I messed up in the beginning when I had the tension up too tight and the stitch length too long. But short stitch length and then cut two stitches in the middle and pull it out and it'll, it'll fit well. But I'm going to keep going. I think I'm going to get all these done today, and I don't know if I'm going to have any time to be right to draw out the other one. Okay, four hours later, well, you got all those bad boys on there. That's so pretty. Nice and even. Eight baffle walls. All sewn up. It wasn't that hard. Just got to keep, just got to have good marks on your stuff. A little bit easy on marking my shell material and it wasn't that easy to read chalk marks on my baffles either but worked out alright a little bit of patience burned through the whole uh, Return of the King while I was doing this but now tomorrow we get to pull out the other one top the outer layer and draw it all out take two hours maybe and so that bad boy up here, and we're ready to go. Got my down today. There's my box of down. It exploded when I opened it. Nice fluffy down. So we'll see how we do it. I don't got a bathtub. So we'll see how it works getting that in there. And no Christmas pants neither. So. Alright. I'm going to call it a night, and we'll keep going later on this week. So we're on day four. Uh, yesterday I drew all the lines on the under shell. On the uh, outer shell, I'd say. The, the one that's on the, on the outside. And uh, I started doing the darts last night. Did a couple. I'm going to keep going today. I'm going to get all these darts sewn up today. And then we start the fun part of putting the top shell onto the bottom shell. The inner shell onto the outer shell. Um, I've seen a lot of posts about how difficult it is to imagine what goes where when you're doing that. And that's hopefully going to be... I'll hopefully be able to show you guys that. And answer some questions for everybody. But there we go. But she's looking good. I'm happy with it. So far, it's good. Okay. Let's see if I can explain this idea I got here of how I'm going to sew these in. Well, I I finished the, top, the outer layer. I got the outer layer laying down with the inside of it pointing up. And I got my inner layer with the inside pointing up. I got the... Let's see. It would be, if I was using this as the head end, I was laying in the hammock. This would be the right side of the outer layer. And then what would be the right side of the inner layer if I had turned it over. Okay. And so I'm doing the outer side of the outer side wall. I'm pinning in to the right outer side here. With this in the bottom, this in the top. And then I'm going to take this. As soon as I'm done pinning all the way down. I'm going to crunch this up and put clothes pins on it and stick it in my machine 
and start sewing here and then have all this laying outside the machine on the left hand side and then when I'm done with that I'm going to take the next one here and pin it there and sew that one and go all the way till I'm done and we'll see how far I get it's already 10 o'clock on day four and then I think I put in three out two three hours today so uh, what do we say pushing 15 hours now on this thing but once this is done I've only got some fiddling to do to get the three edges down with the grill screen in it and then I'm ready to put it down there hopefully it will be done this weekend so here we go it's all pinned up I've got the inner shell uh, face up I guess I would call that uh, the inside facing up and then the outer layer all rolled up and pinned and now I'm going to stick that end of the machine and draw it up, pull it down what I'm worried about is this part right here and see I'm going to take when I got this done I'm going to take that edge and sew it up here so you can see that a little better this edge is going to get sewn into that so I'm going to st it'll end up standing this up like that and this will be standing up like that and that will keep the down from going between these two chains here but that's I'll figure that out after I do the long side so We'll throw this bad boy in there and then see how it looks. So those two short ends and then then we roll this out. Roll the stuff out and then throw this one over and pin it and do the same thing again. D times. We're not going to be done tonight. Okay, I'm calling it a night. But uh, I'm happy. It worked out just like I hoped. Let's see, just like that there. See if we can see what happened in there. There's my corner on the bottom. Worked out perfect. Sewed up all along. It was long enough. When I pull it up, it makes a beautiful box. Let's see if we can see what the outside corner is going to look like. I didn't cut all the threads out yet. But we'll see. No, you can't see it from here. You're going to need to put some down in there for you to see it. I made a nice corner. Looks pretty. So, uh, yep, I'm gonna put it away and work tomorrow on this and see if I can. Friday night, it's gonna be hard. But we'll see if I can get a couple hours in tomorrow, get all these sewn up, and then it's just the edges in the grill screen. We'll be ready to stuff down this weekend. Alright. Okay, day five. Uh. I've had a little bit, it's been about an hour now, put in, now we're on the, did it finish the third wall, starting to get some shape, this bad boy, here you see this is the, the corner on the bottom, these edges here, I'm going to sew them up with gross grain in the middle there, and uh, only got five more to go, and then the sides, and no ready stuff down ain't gonna happen today. There's no way I'm gonna be able to do that today. But we'll keep at it. Uh, technique is working good, except that uh, when I was pinning it up, I wasn't paying any good, close enough attention. And then the second one, this edge got stuck. I got the edge stuck under there, pinned it in, didn't notice I pinned it in, then sewed it, and didn't notice I sewed it in there. So I rip out a foot of stitches. Now I know better. Um, oh, mm -hmm. keep at it. It's, a, it's almost looking like a quilt. Just need some down in there. But keep going. So, outer shell is done. Uh, it's not done. The walls are done. I don't think so. Um, I don't know how well you can see.
shape. But it's uh let's see if we can get from this side. But there's it's definitely a corner here. Looks good. So far so good. Um it's twelve o'clock at night on day five. Sewed all those bad boys up. Uh, I don't know if I want to tackle the sides yet. But we'll see. Um, we're close to putting the down in. We just got to get the three sides done. But this step was a hell of a lot quicker and easier. If I'm going to be making these, if I'm making summer quilts, I'm going to be doing sewn through. And if I'm making any more winter quilts, I'm not going to be putting hems on the walls. I'll just throw those bad boys in there. Save myself two days. Well, it's six hours of work. If I cut that step out. But it worked out really well. I'm really happy with how the corners worked. Just had to see if we can get a picture of that. Um, no, you can't really see how I did it, but just did a 90 degrees. Folded my corner up and set it up along the line that I had already drawn. Worked out real well. But, hmm, let's see if I can figure out the sides, if they're even. Then we'll throw some ghost grain in there and see if I can have up. Shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be that hard at all. Okay, we're at the theoretical bar here in the corner. Um, this is what was giving me a headache when I was thinking about it. But Sophia knew exactly what to do. Um, we take the so you got the the side here, and then this side is going to be the outside wall. Here, it's under this. So to make the outside wall, you need to have a corner there. So and here's our corner. We'll see. There's the white corner, and what you want is to actually tuck these two corners together and make a seam from the back side of the fabric to make that corner stay on the outside. Yeah, and it's going to stick out. So it, those two lines where they cross is going to be the end. These two sides, you fold them up and align them like that. And then you sew along that line to that corner. That way you still have fabric to sew the whole side up together. And when you hold this tight together, you get that nice inside out corner. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to pin that up and I'm going to sew that up and we'll take a look and see how it looks when it's done. So uh, we, we uh, call it a night. I'm really happy I got all the walls in. Um, I started slowly working on the corner with the growth screen. I'm not really happy with the way it turned out. But um, we'll see how it goes. I got it in the middle. I got an idea about putting it on the outside, like around, fold it in, or I do one la the bottom layer and sew in the growth screen and then fold it over to the top layer. I don't know. I'm gonna give it some thought. But we shouldn't be thinking that one o'clock in the morning. So we're calling it a night, but so far so good. The shell's done, the walls are done, looks good. I'm happy, it's pretty even for someone at 12 o'clock at night. But see how it goes tomorrow. Now we're working on the sides today, day six. Uh, I did the, which layer is this? This is the upper layer, the inner layer hemmed it and put the growth screen in in one shot. So that's sides done. Now I'm hemming the other side. Let's see here. Hemming the other side here. Then I'm gonna do the corner. I folded this when you did this there's a flap over and I folded that in here. Then I'm gonna hem all this way. I'm gonna hem the whole side here and then I'm gonna try to fold in the growth screen and hem it in. And sew that in there. Then that's how it'll be done.
seeing if it works out the way I thought. I was going to try to do everything in one shot, but it wasn't happening. i got to do the hem first on the side. Because it's going to be blind when I do it. I'm going to... When I fold this over and stick it down, see if I can sew that. I'm going to fold this and stick that right down on top of that. But I'm not going to see anything, so i got to make sure that the hem is done here so I don't miss. And then hopefully, we'll, and then we might have to turn it over on this side and sew it on that side so I see what I'm doing. But I'm going to work it out and see how it goes. The other side should go quicker. We're working on, I have hemmed the bottom side, the other side, and now we're sticking this in. Got to go careful, make sure I get it lined up nice. I'm worried the channel's going to get too small, but I got kind of really thin uh, shot cord, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but you got to be careful you don't make it too big. So, slowly but surely, 180 centimeters to go. So, we're done with that side. Let's see if you can see it. It came out beautiful. And I couldn't ask. I'm so happy with my machine. She went right through it like nothing. Didn't even slow down. Two layers of gross grain and six layers of 1.1. No problem. Beautiful stitches, kept it straight. Real happy. Got a little close to the edge in one or two spots, but shouldn't be a problem. Alright, now it's just the other side. Okay, let me see if I can show you this corner that's been. I'm not sure I'm doing it right, but it looks good so far. Looks pretty good. Um, in here, let's see, there's the corner. So, uh, in a previous, earlier in the video, I showed you that I made a. I, I sort of triangle it and then hemming it down you get this kind of a triangle it comes up here you get, you're gonna get a piece of six straight up like that and then you flip it over here and then you gotta hem it that's a little bit of a pain but if you fold the edge over the corner making a little triangle out of that here Pull that in and make a triangle, it makes it a little easier. But this one came out real well. But it's not exactly even high. Here. I don't think it can be even. I think it's got something to do with the length of it. But, well, but now we're going to hem this and then we're going to hem fold in the gross grain and then this side will be done too. And we just got to figure out how to do the short side. We're on tables to the long sides. The other side came out as perfect as the first one. We're working on the short side now. I'm pinning it up, piling. Then I hemmed it without sewing. I put the pins in it there. And then I'm going to put this gross screen on there and do both of them in one shot. And then I'm going to fold those and pin them and then stick them over, fold this in and pin it and sew it all in one shot. And then we're done with the three sides and it's time to put it down in. Woo, buddy! Okay, that's what the short side looked like. It was even. Pretty much half a centimeter difference. I did a good job with the counting out the darts and the on both sides. Looks good. I'm a little afraid I'm gonna have to put a little couple stitches in the corner so that the down doesn't leak out. It might not be completely sealed there, but we'll see when I'm done how it looks. But I'm impressed, and it's the down left. I don't know. I just don't think I'm gonna get to it tonight, and it's killing me. But uh, we'll see we go. See how it goes. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. We are in the down stuffing stage. I just showed Sophia Ma Franke's video of how he stuffs down with his Christmas pants on. Um, she was a little skeptical when I explained it to her, but then she trusts Franke more than me, so we'll see. Um, we're gonna give it a shot. I can't really film it while I'm doing it, but he did a real good job of showing how it works. So I'm just gonna show you the aftermath if I screw up. All right, here we go. I, I got we got four hands here and no hand to hold the tele, to hold the phone, so we're not gonna get any film of this. I'll show you afterwards. Okay, um, Sophia of course takes over. She says I'm doing it wrong. Usual. She does it much nicer. 
And when we got it hanged up, hang it, all hanging up like this, you don't even have to stick your finger in there. You can just get it in the hole and then shake it out. Need a hand baby? Not too much down flying around. We're doing pretty good so far, but I think the sum of all the down at the end is going to be half a bad one, but so far so good. I just make sure I close the thing and smack that out. Because his openings are a bit smaller than the bag since themselves, therefore you can't really when you get your finger in there right. without holding the plastic. And that's why it doesn't quite work as I, well. Yeah, as nicely as what was his name? Frankie. Frankie. I think he had less baffles in his quilt. We've got nine baffles. So now, though, we have done the most of it in. See how it crinkles up? That's why it won't come out proper. Maybe if we cut the bag lengthwise instead of yeah, it might make a smaller bag. You might have to cut. Bag. You would have to cut the seam of them. That's right. So we, we'll try that in the next one. But yeah, that's how it works. I really want to squish the down. <laughs> See what it feels like. See how much it is it's in there. But we're going to keep this up for about an hour, maybe. Okay. Then we'll be done. Let's Show you what it looks like when we're done. Close that quickly. Oh, yeah. So, um, <coughs> we found a new method that works out pretty well. Halfway through. Yeah, well, Eric's holding well. the prepped product there. Mm -hmm. Once you cut them in half, if you have a hard time doing Frankie's. as nice as Frankie did, and you can't keep, take one other half of the bag and just lay it inside it. Like that. And you have a whole bag again that you can just stick your scissor into the corner and cut open the end. If you have good scissors. And then you can sort of hold the whole thing close together and stick it into the baffle it goes into with a lot less effort and especially if it's cramped the way this is and then you just pull the first bag off right easy and then you just tuck the other bag inside for a bit and shake all, all the down loose when you do it inside the baffle you don't get so much around and you can always shake it down into the bottom of the baffle, that way you have the down in the place you want it when you're going to sew it shut. Two. Same two birds with one stone. Or... Yeah, I gotta show off my... <coughs> Dusty thing. My down then piece. I still do his nicey finger hold through when I pull the last pieces of the bag out. But so, there you go. Work nicely. Three baffles to go. Thank you. We're done. So pretty. It feels heavy. Can you feel it like that? I gotta sew up the top in a hurry so we don't get any escapees here. Well, the down is gathered in this end, yeah. so it should be in reason the part to yeah. sew the other end. Yeah, It'll be reasonable to do Especially that. Especially if you just move yeah. all the clothespin down to this end. Yep, yeah. and then uh, first you need to clean up I this clean up to be able to sew. <laughs> But, considering it doesn't look like we've had a, a pound of feathers in here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Not loose yep. penny. And I got one left, I'm going to make a hat out of half an ounce left. But I got one and a half ounces in each baffle, nine baffles, 14 and a half ounces. But, oh, it's yep. going to go down to zero yep. Fahrenheit. Zero Fahrenheit, yep. That Minus would be 15, cents, 15 to six, 17 mm. Celsius. That's the plan. Alright, I'm gonna sew this bad boy up and we're gonna see what it looks like when it's done. I throw it around the table. Well then. There she is. She's huge. Takes up my whole table. Um, I shook it down around a bit. It's not even. Most of it's still up here. Empty right there. I don't quite understand how I'm gonna shake it out so well. I'll work on that for a bit. Um, 
can't measure the loft yet. I have to get it out on the table or on the floor somewhere. But uh, I don't see that she's around at the tops. Tomorrow I'm gonna fix the suspension. Then we'll put it in, a, put it in a hammock and see what it looks like. I'm planning on putting some shug loops on his video. He said he mentioned loops that he puts here in the sides to pull it up. I'm just sitting in it. I don't know how heavy it is, but all that good stuff we're gonna do tomorrow. All right, good project. Took a long time. A couple of tips. Make sure you give yourself extra seam allowance up here. At the head ends, there's a bit of a pain. Um, <laughs> don't hem your baffle walls. And uh, other than that, I think don't got much more to say. See, stuffing down was better when you had four hands than two hands. But I don't know. She's she's pretty. She's beautiful. My goal was to make as close to a professional one as I could. Put a, all my heart and concentration into it so that it would be. I don't know. I can't. I don't want. I want to say as good as uh, any of the cottage uh, cottage producers would do. But I'm only making one. I'm never make another one. <laughs> No, I'm gonna make myself a summer one, and probably for the. I need to make one more so I can have somebody to go out with me when it's cold out. But no way is this uh, feasible as a, being able to sell it. I don't know how they cottage guys get get it done quick enough that they can make any money on it. I mean, this is a 25-hour project. I'm still not done yet. I still got the suspension to do. Um, oh, that's it for me. I'm going to go lay down on my bed and put this thing on top of me and see how nice and warm it is. Of course, uh, even though I'm tired, I had to do a couple tricks here. Sophia managed to get the whole underquilt into this stuff sack. Craziness. 742 grams. Not bad. Weighs as much as my Insotex underquilt. Except this one goes... Uh, 30 degrees colder, not bad, and it also costs, material costs for just about as much, after I, I bought everything in bulk and pay tax on it, just stuff my mom sent me, um, okay, but now I'm calling it a night, tomorrow we're going to go out and test it, whoo buddy, the day 7 yesterday, 6 yesterday, but it was day 7, and now it's day 8, and we're on the suspension. Not really yet. We're doing the pull outs. The shock cord that tightens the ends. Um, as you can see here, I made a little loop that I sewed on here. I'm going to put a. I'm going to put my shock cord in there and do a whipping knot around it. So it makes it real small. Worked out real well when I was doing my uh, knotty mods on my hammocks. I'm going to run it through here, and do the same thing on this side, it's going to take a little while, and when that's done, we're on the suspension. I'm not quite sure about the downproofness of my material. After last night I saw a couple of feathers sticking out, we'll see how it works. I don't know if maybe I had it wrong side in, or what I did, but I'll have to look some later. Oh, so it came out. Whipped. in this little in the loop and then I'm going to pull this one all the way through and then this is going to end up inside that channel you're not going to see it so I got the suspension on put uh, the shock cord through um, using some touch wear Let's see if I can show this this is a quilt hook put this up on your whippy sling then I'm using uh, another kind of quilt hook can help me pull it straight up. I don't know if I'm going to need it. And then the last part is a shug knot, a shug loop. And he, one of the first videos I ever saw about underquilts was his instructional series. And one of the things he showed was a loop that you put across the middle like this. And this is a kind of heavy underquilt. So I'm putting that on the sides. Should have done it before, but I was a little excited. But. 
So now I'm going to sew in these two, and then we're ready to go hang it out in the woods. Woo, buddy. Now we're out here, showing her off. Uh, I got a lot of work to do before I can go jump in there. Uh, I got her up. Um, I got a mosquito net on it, which is affecting the, the view. Now it's winter, I can take that off of there, I think, maybe. Um, Oliver's ready to take pictures of me while I'm laying in it, so. Or I'm going to put him in there, I'm going to take pictures. We'll see, but I gotta fix the sides and then we'll jump in there. Okay, mosquito net's bothering me, but I realized I'd have to take the whole thing down, and I'm not interested in doing that right now. Um, but so let's see what it looks like. Uh, I don't know how much we can see with the mosquito net in there, but it's got a little nervous. It, I don't think it looked that puffy. Still think it needs to be distributed a little better. But we see on this side, they look nice and puffy here. I think I got a little bit too, not quite enough down in it. Or it's a little bit too big for how much down I put in there. Um, should have, maybe should have gone with seven, or a little shorter, the but on the ends. I'm working on it. So, look at the end here. That looks so pretty. I'm gonna, I had to jump in it myself and check. I mean, he just made a gap because he doesn't know how to lay in it, right? But, um, but we got a shug nuts going, and uh, I'm real anxious to try it myself. Looks good on that side. We'll give it a shot. Hello. In the hammock. I don't know what that picture this is. Um, no, we're it's, not. It's nice and warm. Um, I wish I could have uh, talked my wife into coming out here. Is, uh, I need to check some gaps and puffiness and all that kind of stuff, and I can't do it when I'm not laying when I'm laying in here. But it's 10 degrees out today, 11 maybe uh, Celsius, so it's really warm. Uh, so uh, in here it's toasty warm, ridiculous. And this weekend I'm going to test it out in the woods, and we'll see how it goes. So, I took off the mosquito net. Um, now you can see the loft on this bad boy. I'll try to spread out the back the down a little better. It's a monster. I'm real happy with it. Look at the other side. And uh, I'm not exactly sure I got 30 degrees on my suspension. My hammock is a little sensitive for that. But yeah, so far so good. I'll take some pictures.